Hello, this is Mike. In this screencast, I want to adopt the role of a history teacher. Not really, but I have a particular view of social media that I'd like to share with you. We hear a lot of rhetoric these days about the social media revolution, how Web2 technologies have transformed our lives in ways we'd never have thought possible. It's what most of the academics and popular press will portray to you. I want to suggest it's something very, very different. I want to suggest that we've actually gone back in time and rediscovered traditional ways of doing business. And that it's only the technology that's changed and made something seem revolutionary that is anything but. So. Let's begin to construct that argument. Let's think historically. Social media have been around a long time, in my view, for centuries, in fact. And many of the terms we commonly use, the jargon associated with social media in the Web 2 world, well, it has its origins long, long ago. The idea of posting messages, copying and sharing, comes from the era, probably, of Julius Caesar. The Romans had a scroll-based system. You'd write a message, a messenger would then deliver it to someone else within your network. They'd read it, perhaps comment on it, circulate it to another person in the network, and so on. So commenting and sharing and circulating dates back to Roman times. If we look at ancient Pompeii, Wow, this is really interesting. We discover where writing on the wall as a term came from. Well, it didn't come along with Facebook. It was actually practiced in ancient Pompeii. People would quite literally write status updates on the walls of their own homes and businesses. And there was even space provided in public for graffiti. It was a way of circulating news, engaging in electioneering, even promoting products and services. Writing on the wall was quite literally writing on the wall in Pompeii. Move forward to the 16th century and the term multimedia campaign begins. Luther was probably the first author whose work went viral. The theses themselves were not particularly widely read, but the messages within them were translated and interpreted and represented through plays, songs, poems, pamphlets, and so on. Luther was probably the first author to go viral. In the 17th century, the coffee houses of London were a hive of social activity and a place of doing business. These were literally social networks. Merchants and other traders would come together in coffee houses, network, and do business. And around the same time, the Royal Society introduced the idea of a closed social network by being one of the first organizations where to be added as a friend, in other words, to become a member, which is what being a friend literally meant, friend of the Royal Society had to be introduced in order to gain entry to a community of practice and share knowledge. So both open and closed social networks originate in the coffee houses of London. By the 18th century, the printing press has arrived, however, and to me, this and later broadcast media, they were the game changers. It became possible to share information, including advertising and marketing materials, in a quite different way. Let's think about more recent developments for a second and how they've changed. As we've seen, social networking was around for a long time, illustrated by the origins of terminology. If we look at modern technologies, we can see that things spread not over hundreds of years, but over a few years. To illustrate this, Let's consider some recent inventions and how long it took them to reach 50 million users or subscribers. 
humble radio, or wireless set, as it was originally known in England, took 38 years before 50 million people owned and used a wireless. The TV, much quicker, just 13 years. And this was greatly enhanced in the UK by the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II, the single biggest boost to sales of TVs. The internet, wow, much more rapid. Only four years to have 50 million online users. And one of my favorite inventions of all time, the humble iPod, just three years before 50 million people had this handy little Apple device playing music sitting in their pocket. And then, of course, there's Facebook, astonishingly rapid less than a quarter of a year. In other words, Facebook achieved in just three months or less 50 million subscribers, 200 million users in just its first year. So we can see as technology advances, so too does the pace of uptake. And this, in my view, has a rapid impact on how different developments are perceived. I'd like to argue that social media is not revolutionary at all. It's merely the technologies that have made it seem revolutionary. My key message is this. We think of something as being revolutionary, but in reality, this is an evolutionary process. And actually, in many ways, it's a backward process. Because what I'd argue is that new technologies have taken us back in time to the way people used to do business in ancient Rome, in Pompeii, and in the coffee houses of London. Social media was the normal way of doing business. It really was the business model for hundreds and hundreds of years. Broadcasting changed this. It centralized control and created passive audiences. With the printing press and much later radio and television, Information dissemination became more one way, a push process as I like to think of it. So we could push marketing materials, advertising, at consumers in the hope that some of them would pay attention and be converted. The rise of the internet, and in particular the Web2 platforms that we're talking about here, they ended the dominance of broadcast medium. The push model disappeared and everything became far more interactive. People started talking to each other again. And through those conversations, we saw a return to the norm, the social networking business model. It is an old, old model. It's just come back. So that's my main argument. I don't know whether I've convinced you, but don't take the idea of a social media revolution completely at face value. History really can retweet itself. What we're seeing, and it's evident in the terminology used for hundreds and hundreds of years, is a return to old ways of talking to each other, organizing society, and doing business. Web2 has taken us back to those ways because of the pace of technological change. It's given an evolutionary process an altogether revolutionary character that I'd say it just doesn't deserve. Thank you.